Hello, welcome to There Will Always Be Another Book. Uh, today we are talking about Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49, which I mentioned that I was going to read in my last video, and I'm so glad that I did because uh, I feel like I've been I've been being spoiled recently with a bunch of five star books uh, because this is another one, and Thomas Pynchon is slowly but surely working his way up as being a potential. Um, as being at Nabokovian levels of of uh, um, literary infatuation for me, uh, he's I, I honestly can't wait to just dive into as many other Pinchon books as possible. But today uh, I'll quickly talk about the Crying of Lot Forty Nine. Um, because of the length of the novel, it's pretty much I, I think it's pretty safe to say that uh, if you've read a book of Pinchons, it's probably this one. Uh, and so that helps a, a lot because I don't really need to waste time doing any plot summaries or anything. But what I will say, and the reason I wanted to make a video anyway, um, is that this is a great, a great primer for if you've heard about Gravity's Rainbow, uh, if you want to kind of tackle it, but it, you've heard that it's so long and so dense, there's a, there's a big feeling in Gravity's Rainbow where you become kind of overcome with uh, you know the the amount of information, and you realize that you're not you don't understand anything that's going on, um, but you're just kind of enjoying the ride. And even in a book this this small, um, you will feel that same thing. Um, just in case there's anybody who hasn't read it and doesn't mind plot uh, summary or spoilers, uh, the story follows a housewife whose name is Edipa Mass or Mass. And uh, she suddenly finds out that she's become a co-executor or executrix to an ex-boyfriend's multi-million dollar estate. And she goes down this insane rabbit hole of finding these, like this conspiracy of um, uh, like a transcontinental European secret mailing system that came from uh, Europe to America. And it's such a fascinating book. It has the classic um, <clears throat> Pinchonian uh, dream logic style of writing, uh, but it also has um, a couple of just very, very funny moments, a couple of surprisingly you know, in my video on Ada for Ardor, I talked about how uh, one of the things that gets overlooked with Nabokov is that he can make really uh, touching kind of real moments um, in spite of his very, f <laughs> dare I say, like flowery, um, uh, dripping prose. And Pinchon is, is, it's hard to say that he's similar because, well, oh, so I need to think about this, but well, I guess I am thinking about it. You're, you're watching me think about it. Um, Pinchon's works always, weirdly enough, feel more real because of, uh, partly because of the setting and also the language. Um, but there are times in Pinchon, also time uh, in this book and also in Gravity's Rainbow, where you'll read something and you'll just be kind of so confronted with how clear the image is that Pinchon has made, even in the absurdity of it. Uh, and some of the I mean, really, the standout part of that for me was um, when Oedipus meets the crying sailor who's got the who's got the uh, the tattoo on the back of his hand of the muted horn. And there's I'm trying to just find it because there's two there's two sections that are famous in that. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's this great uh, Pinchonian line. Uh, that's phrased as like a question, and I'll read it really quickly. What voices overheard, flinders of luminescent gods, glimpsed among the wallpaper's stained fo foliage, candle stubs lit to rotate in the air over him, prefiguring the cigarette he or a friend must fall asleep someday smoking, thus to end among the flaming, secret salts held all those years by the insatiable stuffing of a mattress that could keep vestiges of every nightmare sweat, helpless overflowing bladder, viciously tearfully consummated wet dream, like the memory bank to a computer of the lost. And it's, uh, you know, that's a, that's such a, uh, that's such a typical pinch and sentence, not, not typical in that, uh, the, the book is filled with those, but just that when they come, it's, it's sort of so, 
it's it feels almost inevitable that th- like the way that he's that he's written leads to these kind of great long form uh like long punctuated uh, sentences and there's another one a, a page later which i really liked this is after uh Oedipa and the arthritic uh carrying the sailor up in a like um uh, it, what's that i'm i'm forgetting the name of that that statue of 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 mary holding jesus anyway i'll uh, i'll chuck it in i'll have a little annotation there or maybe there anyway um so uh Oedipa and the arthritic are carrying him up she knew because she had held him that he suffered dts behind the initials was a metaphor a delirium tremens a trembling unfurrowing of the mind's plowshare the saint whose water can light lamps the clairvoyant whose lapse and recall is the breath of god the true paranoid for whom all is organized in spheres joyful or threatening about the central pulse of himself the dreamer whose puns probe ancient fettered shafts and tunnels of truth all act in the same special relevance to the word whatever it is the word is there buffering to protect us from the act of metaphor then was a thrust at truth and a lie depending on depending where you were inside safe or outside lost and that's one of those pinch on sentences that pinch on sentences uh that has a very particular geometry and structure to it uh i don't really know how to describe it i don't really know if i want to describe it other than those vague terms but there are times when you know and I, like i don't have synesthesia or anything but there are times when uh you're reading certain authors where the way that they sound the way that the sentences sound forms a sort of physical structure in your head um and, and it's it's just a feeling like you know i don't necessarily visualize it but um some of these you, you know uh, when i read nabokov i sort of imagine these like m- greatly intricate uh, sometimes even multi-dimensional shapes um but reading pinchon is kind of it it almost verges into like you know maybe non euclidean uh, and shapes that are just illogical like they would never be formed in nature um i really love that about pinchon's writing and there are some it's it's got this this lovely grace uh, uh in the way that they're constructed and to skip to another part <laughs> that's just sort of funny um but also demonstrates Pinchon's understanding of subtractive synthesis um which being someone who's into into electronic music I, it was really nice to read about this uh from a novel in the mid 60s um Oedipus husband Mucho is kind of becoming more and more distant possibly due to well likely due to some LSD that he's received from uh Dr. Hilarious and Oh my god the names in this book I know you've probably already heard but the names are so good in this book um Genghis Cohen as another stand out but anyway back to Mucho and uh and Edipa um Mucho is a DJ and he's having this part where he's re- he's having this moment where he's realizing that he can sort of deconstruct all sounds that he's listening to and focus in on the individual overtones of all of them and put them together and to read something just this kind of amazing science fiction idea um combined with some very like funny humor uh <clears throat> you'll think i'm crazy ed ed uh but i can do the same thing in reverse listen to anything and take it apart again spectrum analysis in my head i can break down chords and timbres and words too into all the basic frequencies and harmonics with all their different loudness and listen to them each pure tone but all at once how can you do that it's like i have a separate channel for each one mucho said excited and if i need more i just expand add on what i need i don't know how it works but lately i can do it with people talking too say rich chocolatey goodness rich chocolatey goodness said edipa yes said Mucho and fell silent and that's so like um that's so just funny um and also it's a great like a uh, description of if you have any ex- experience with this um you might find it relatable um yeah there's this book it's 
there's a lot in it despite how how short it is and i'll also say that uh sorry just again looking at my notes um this book is kind of it doesn't have a typical hero's journey structure uh Oedipa is constantly like trying to find things trying to discover things and she is discovering things she is successful but she's uh just kind of figuring out how deep the rabbit hole goes and kind of feeling confronted with the fact that she she feels like she's losing like she's actually losing all of the all of the people the men in her life um uh and it's like perhaps some like giant conspiracy the book ends on a cliffhanger um and but it's also like yes the book is about certain things but the book is also just about paranoia uh and that's an, that's another way that you can read it um that can maybe make it a bit more uh tolerable if you're a person who really who usually really uh needs those sort that sort of like gratification of um of themes and it's different from someone like Murakami who I've criticized in the past where uh in Kafka on the Shore for example he he sets up these themes but they're not ambiguous enough like they like they actually just felt like they weren't finished they didn't feel like they were vague enough to be multi-interpretable um whereas this is just uh I think as Amy Hungerford said you know like the amount of people who have tried to figure out what Oedipa Mas's name means is should indicate and you know like i said there's Genghis Cohen Dr Hilarious um Pierce Inverarity um there's a <laughs> there's just it, like absurd stuff like one of the people that she meets is uh, a member of the Emirati Anonymous who are a group of people like Alcoholics Anonymous uh but who have decided to refrain from falling in love uh you know some of the ideas in this book are, are so so just like funny and yeah there's not much else to say it's a short book it like i said it's probably the book people have read so and i don't know how much more i have to add um except to say that this is a great potential starting part, part for pension a uh, point for a pension um and i'm keen to just read everything else he's written i uh, i have to be good and i'm not buying any more books until i go back home but trust trust me when i say um in the in the distant future there will be some more videos on more pension novels because i can't wait to read mason dixon v vinelander um and what's the other one the one that was made a movie inherent vice um yeah i'll definitely be sussing those out uh let me know what you because there's going to be some time um if anybody reads this before i've uh, or if anyone watches this video before i've read any more pension novels let me know if you have a personal recommendation for what should be the next pinch on after uh, i know i did the kind of wrong thing of starting with gravity's rainbow um but i enjoyed it so i guess it wasn't really wrong um but after those two what are some that you recommend and what did you think of this book um thank you very much for watching make sure to keep on reading because there will always be another book uh and i'll see you in the next video